righty tighty. I'll give you the greatest hit, shall I? I had an idea for something like the Ghoul for years, and it was just kind of on the pile of ideas, just marked kind of, well, you know, someday, good luck with that. Um, and then it just became very, very clear to me that uh, no one was gonna give me any money to make a film, like ever. And so I started to think, well, maybe I should make something a more obviously low budget idea. So myself and um, Tom Meaton, uh, who co-produced the film, just set about going through it, just, just going, okay, how much of this can we do on uh, a extremely low budget? Uh, and the answer was hardly any of it. So we would cut things like opening scene, uh, there'd be lots of forensics and kind of bodies and crime scene photographers, so that had to go. Here's the head scratcher. When he gets shot, he don't fall down. Stripping all that stuff away that you'd do if you had a few million pounds just seemed to kind of help the film. We sort of grew up, if you like, uh, in those formative uh, years doing quite silly character comedy. So the ghoul script was actually sort of uh, took my breath away a bit because it was sort of in a, in a bit of a different world to, to much of that. And then to be asked to play the lead in a, in a, a proper big uh, drama like that was uh, obviously going to be a challenge. I'd never done anything like that before. I didn't have any drama, really. Um, so I was very excited, but also a bit scared by the idea. Getting involved in the producing of it almost came naturally, and that's the sort of collaboration of, of working together and working on the script a bit as well. Can you tell me what you'd like to get out of these sessions? I grew up loving, uh, you know, science fiction and horror, but as, a, as a, an adult, which I suppose is what I am, um, I love uh, a mystery. So I wanted to do a detective story. And I don't know how aware I was of this, but we realized that, that it was an idea about mental health and mental illness. Um, but uh, I'm told that people aren't like queuing around the block at multiplexes to watch films about depression. So we thought it was a good idea to uh, wrap up some of those kind of grimmer, uh, more difficult subjects in this sort of, uh, uh, more nifty genre packaging of a of a thriller. Hey, Kath. Jesus Christ! It was a lot of hard work, and in fact, the actual shooting of it, which we shot for sort of roughly two weeks, that was almost the easiest bit, uh, and that was the most fun bit. Um, we didn't know quite a, how it was going to turn out, um, but that was sort of like, ah, let's do this, and there's an energy to that. You're doing it on low budget, everyone's in it together, and that's what happens on a low budget film as well, that everyone all pulls in. You went in too deep, and they flipped you, and now you can't get out. I think Tom's just a very likeable screen presence, and I knew that, but what I didn't know was that he was going to be uh, a convincing, cool cop. And it's a really nuanced performance. Tom was previously known as somebody who was very wild and expansive on stage. Some of the stuff he's done with Noel Fielding and a lot of the stuff that he, his solo stuff and the stuff he used to do with Steve Oram um, was, you know, a big, big, broad brushstrokes characters. Um, whereas here, he can't do any of that. Uh, if you get that kind of hyper energy and you just bottle it, you get something very implosive and very intense. I was very conscious of not doing too much with my face internalize it um so it's a lot of the anguish that the character chris is feeling is on the inside so yeah for me it was quite a challenge to rein it in to rein my face in are you okay because we've got a cast of in the nicest possible sense a bunch of clowns uh, in this film they bring a humor to the film uh, and they also bring i think maybe a kind of sense of danger that's kind of hard to put your finger on. There's just that slight edge that, you know, Alice Lowe or Dan Skinner or Rufus Jones, they kind of bring this kind of unpredictability. What they're doing is creating a universe of the mind. They are gods. Our ambitions were, let's get it on in a cinema somewhere, um, just as a sort of formality to try and get a couple of reviews. So we just couldn't be happier that it's found this kind of exposure and getting to, the, yeah, getting to the right audience as well. I think that it's just unique. It's a unique film, really. And, uh, and, and I think Gareth tried to make something utterly original, and I think that sort of shines through. So it's a co combination of it being a sort of really original idea and, and, and the, the way we went about it, I think, also shines through, because there's a sort of um, depiction of London as well. There's a sort of 
almost like a character gnawing away at you. A lot of these things, they come from the heart as well, and I think Gareth put a lot of his heart and soul into the, the writing and making of the ghoul. That's the most pleasing thing uh, about the film, is that uh, I get the sense that some people can watch it more than once, and it's a different experience every time you watch it.